Hey guys, today we're doing a good old fashioned q and I'm excited. I've got my coffee, I've got tons of questions. I was just taking a bunch of screenshots. I asked on Twitter and Instagram, just what you guys wanted to know, things you were curious about. These are some of my favorite videos to film where I'm just chatting with you guys. We're not necessarily talking about just makeup or beauty or just my life. It's kind of a mishmash, a mix. I know not everyone's into these because some of y'all don't care about me and I'm cool with that. I get it. There are certain YouTubers I care about and love and watch every video and certain ones I really just watch their makeup ones. I don't care about the rest of their life. I get it. It's all good. So if you don't care about me, this may not be the video for you. If you just clicked out of the video, ouch, arrow through the heart. I'm already being weird. I need to like bring it down about 10 levels. I have a lot of repeat questions, so I'm gonna focus on those, your juicy questions. If you're wondering what's on my lips, I'm wearing the number seven. I just bought this today. Stay Perfect Lipstick in Raspberry Blush. These are like kind of a velvety finish. Not totally matte, but definitely leans a little bit more matte than it does like luminous or moisturizing. But it does have a weirdly moisturizing quality. So I picked this up at Walgreens today when I was buying some other stuff and I really like it. It's like a thin layer of color, so I don't feel like it's getting everywhere. I am wearing Invisalign, so I only got a little bit on the sides and then I just did the like pull your finger out of your mouth trick to get the lipstick off the inside of your mouth so it doesn't get on your teeth. Anyway, I get a lot of questions about that with Invisalign how you do it. I mean, that's all I do. I still will sometimes get a little bit, but I'll just kind of wipe it up and then it's usually good. Okay, I'm gonna start with my favorite question I was asked. <laughs> Megan asked, if you could have a 30 second call with a past you, when would you call and what would you say? Literally instantaneously, I thought about, and I've talked about this recently and I need, it's a chapter of my life that is very, very closed, but I think it's important because I know a lot of you guys struggle with this, but I would call me when I was 20 years old I was still with someone, the person that was absolutely not right for me. And when I found out he cheated on me, I would have called me then and said, wipe up your tears, girl, because you're going to meet the love of your life in a few months. It's all good. And he's not right for you and leave him now. <laughs> I would have said all of those things. I think that a lot of times when you put, it's kind of like the sunk cost fallacy. When you put in a lot of time into a relationship, you automatically think, well, we've been together for two years or three years. Certainly then we'll get married next and then this, that, and the other. But the reality is if things are going wrong and there's a part of you in the pit of your stomach that just kind of knows like this isn't right, then it's not right. Someone else is out there for you. That's not the one. Don't feel like because you've sunk so many months or years or whatever into it, that means you have to stick with them. No, you deserve the right person for you. And I don't know that I necessarily believe in like soulmates that there's only one, but I do think there are people that are right for you. And there are people that, you know, if you have that feeling, get out, it's wrong. You shouldn't have that feeling. You just shouldn't. Okay, Lauren asked, how have you adjusted to doing YouTube full-time and not going to a traditional workplace? You know, my mom asked me this today. Isn't that funny? She just randomly said, hey, how are you liking working from home? And I thought, I'm loving it. I really am, but I have to admit, if you're someone that's transitioning from a traditional workplace to either different hours or working from home, it sounds awesome when you hear like, oh, that person works, how lucky are they? Yeah, that it is awesome. But there are a lot of adjustments because from childhood, we are all used to that nine to five, whether it's school, not necessarily nine to five, but going to school through elementary, middle, high school, into college if you go, and then into a career. So all my life, that's what I've been used to. So it has been a momentous adjustment for me. And I feel like in the past two months specifically, I feel like this is my job. And I am, I'm very organized and I'm now like scheduling videos out so I've so I can make shopping lists a month ahead of time for certain videos I wanna do. And I'm starting to treat it more like the way I would have treated my teaching job where I have lesson plans and that kind of stuff. I'm incorporating that, which I love from that job, the organization part of it. I'm incorporating that into this and that is making this so much more fun for me, genuinely, which I know that's the nerd in me, but I like taking notes and I like doing research and I like organizing and planning things. So I'm taking what I learned there and I'm applying it to this and I think it's paying off. I think my videos are better. My organization is better. My planning, I mean, just across the board, I'm so proud of my channel and where it is and where it's going. And yeah, so I'm loving working from home, but it has taken some work. I'm totally self-conscious about this lipstick. I'm like constantly looking in the mirror because it's my first time using it. So I'm like, certainly it's all over my teeth, but it's staying pretty well. Victoria asks, when is your next set of merchandise coming out? Very, very soon. Well, depending on when you're watching this, it could already be out. If it is, I will have the link down below. If it is not, stay tuned. I've already designed it. The, the pieces are coming in for me to approve of them or make tweaks or whatever. So that's where I am now. I'm pre-filming those. So you might be seeing this and it actually is already out. So 
I am pumped though because it's all like fall and autumn theme, great for October and November and just I literally love every single piece that I designed and I, I can't wait to personally own them. So I'm excited to share those with you guys. And I'm definitely working on more of like a holiday or a winter type collection too, but that'll be out obviously in the future. Speaking of the holidays, Bethany asks, will you and Tyler do Vlogmas this year? I always love watching it every year. We have discussed that we definitely wanna do some version of Vlogmas. It's just hard. I mean, it, it takes up a lot of time. We've done it, I wanna say two years in a row and we've done it all the way through every single day. The way we did it last year is probably how we would do it this year where day one would let's say be on my channel day two would be on his day three on my back and forth um, because that breaks up the editing for both of us too so i'm only editing half the videos he's editing half the videos it just makes our lives easier i know a lot of you guys didn't mind because if you're subscribed to us both it's not that big of a deal you'd see it in your feed either way and if for some reason we can't maybe we'll squish day one and two into one and day three and four but it will be some version of that for sure because we do enjoy doing it every year and it's fun for us because it's kind of like home videos we get to rewatch uh whenever we want <laughs> riley asks what are some of your current favorite trends makeup clothing etc um definitely makeup wise i'm really loving smudged eyeliner like uh you literally grab a pencil and just smudge it out i didn't do that today but i did it yesterday and i just think it's so pretty it's something i've never really been into but lately when i'm in a hurry i'll do that and use like the smudger on the back of an eyeliner pencil to smudge it out and I just think it looks pretty it still darkens the area and the second you put mascara with it it just looks so like smoldery and model like and I don't know there's something about it I'm really enjoying I'm also really liking just super sparkly lids not like glitter but like a glimmery wash of color all over the lids and like that's it I'm really into that as well my favorite product for that is the L'Oreal pigment in the shade as if I can link below um, I just saw it at Ulta today, so it's definitely still sold. But I, I love that a pigment is so gorgeous and it's so easy to apply and it's like the prettiest wash. Like that's what I'm thinking of when I say I like a pretty wash of like shimmer. I mean, I'm loving turtlenecks right now. This is one I got from Target and actually it was tucked in earlier. And I'm really digging just tucking my shirts in in the front, whether I have like a belt or not on. I just think it's very becoming on a lot of people. And I was talking to my sister about this and she said, I like it because it makes me feel more comfortable with my body shape. I'm like, me too. Like, I think there's something about it that just, I don't know. Like, it's just so cute. If you've never tried it, it's worth a try. It's supposed to be imperfect. I get, I got questions asking like, Jessica, how do you do your like French tuck? I'm like, I don't know. I literally just grab the center and tuck it into the center and then just kind of poof it out. That's it. No, uh, no special tricks. No behind the scenes, uh, magic. No, that's it. That's it. Cassie asked your favorite Halloween movie. Uh, I, I want to easily say Hocus Pocus, but you know what is a close second? Halloween Town, man. Halloween freaking town. That movie, I actually did not watch as a kid. I watched it as an adult, like in college. And it was so wonderfully cheesy and like terrible effects. And oh, everything about it is so wonderfully cheesy. I love it. And it's very folly, like literally the town they live in. If you've never seen it, Halloween Town and Hocus Pocus are neck and neck. Actually, I've already watched Hocus Pocus this season. I need to watch Halloween Town because it's so good. What is your favorite? I'll put a poll up in the cards. I've never done a poll, but I know I can do it. I'll figure it out. What is, which one's your favorite, Halloween Town or Hocus Pocus? I'd love to know. You have to pick one, you can't pick both. Although I'm not picking one, I'm picking both. <laughs> ah, Cindy asks, one thing I've always wondered, when beauty YouTubers purchase makeup for haul videos, etc., are those purchases considered business expenses, tax deductible slash write-off, seems like it should be? Yes. Oh, taxes and the YouTube world and the internet world in general, bloggers, any of that, is so weird and convoluted and new. So there are a lot of like tax companies, accountant companies, accounting companies, you know, that are specializing in that because there are very specific, confusing pieces to it. You know, not only am I getting paid from YouTube, but I might get paid for a sponsorship. So that's coming from elsewhere. And then I might get paid through like the magic links you guys click on. I get like a couple cents if you buy something through my links down below. If I'm buying makeup from various stores, it's just kind of confusing. But yes, any makeup I buy, I have a business that I have set up. So I have my business account that I pay for it through. Um, and I save the receipts and it's a tax write-off. Same thing, same would go for like my equipment, my camera, my lights, my uh, computer that I edit on, my phone. I take social media photos on that. I, you know, that's a piece of my job. So it actually is 
a tax write-off. Now, that's all great and dandy. It's not like it's free. It's not like, you know, I'm getting a huge discount, but it does help when you're looking at your taxes at the end of the year and your refunds and all that. It definitely helps. I, to be honest, was curious about that before I started YouTube too. Now I can answer with certainty. Yep. Uh, Jack O'Lantern asked, <laughs> how did you and Tyler navigate being in different places regarding wanting kids? Did you eventually just get to a place where you put it in God's hands? Yep. <laughs> we, it's funny, I've mentioned this before and so many people were like, because I had said, Something along the lines of uh, Tyler and I, you know, we, he really wasn't sure that he wanted kids and I knew I did eventually. That's kind of where we were. People were like, you didn't talk about wanting kids before getting married? Of course we talked about wanting kids. But we were both kind of in a nebulous space. We were like, yeah, like maybe in the future. But eventually, you know, as a couple of years in our marriage, we were both like, yeah, maybe soon. So we just kind of, I don't know, we were both open to it and then it happened. So I get alerts on my phone to drink water. I, I think the app is called like drink water. I mean, something like that. And it literally, I have it set that every like two or three hours, it says time to drink more water. I'm like, thank you free app. I actually do appreciate it. But it's so funny. People got so up in arms about the fact that we didn't perfectly agree before we got married. I wasn't marrying him because I want, I was marrying him because I loved him and he was my best friend, regardless of if we wanted kids or not. You know, it's, and the, it's funny because it's really nobody's business. I'm open to sharing about it because I share a lot with you guys. And you know, this is my platform and I can share what I want to share, but it's amazing how many people got upset that we would possibly get into a marriage without knowing 100% whether we were having kids or, I mean, it's not your business. <laughs> we figured it out, move on. We're, we're hoping we're blessed enough to have a second kid, just not right now. That's kind of where we're at. Tracy asks, how do you stay so positive? I try my hardest, but can, can't seem to keep it up. You're a pleasure to watch. I am not positive all the time. You guys are seeing the more decent version of myself. I'm not always hopping on here and crying because why would I grab a camera if I'm upset about something? I've talked about that recently too. So you're seeing a better side of me. You're not seeing 24 seven Jessica. Um, there are times that of course I'm upset and Tyler and I have issues that we work through and you know, my life is not perfect. I will say when I'm really feeling down, I personally pray for you. That might mean just meditating or just like having a quiet moment or going on a walk. Going on a walk is huge for me. Um, when I'm really down, especially when I was going through some postpartum, I think depression, walks, getting outside helped a lot. It didn't completely fix it, but it did help. Um, it sounds so silly and 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 simple, but I'm, there's something about nature and just fresh air and walking that helps. But staying positive, I also just watch YouTube videos that make me happy. If there are certain YouTubers that that for whatever reason when I watch them, I just feel cozy and happy. I will go to their channel and go rewatch old videos if they have nothing new. It sounds weird, but I know some of you guys are like, yeah, I totally get it. Like find that YouTuber or those YouTubers for you that put you in a good mood, that you feel positive energy when you watch their videos and just watch a few of them, maybe get a bath, whatever. That is something that the day to day, that's something that keeps me positive. And it, again, it sounds silly and simple, but it's those silly, simple things in life that when they, you add them all up, they put you in a better mood, then so what? So what that put it, watching a certain YouTuber puts you in a better mood? That's awesome. Use that tool. It's a tool that's there and it's free. Um, another thing, I have a devotional I read. Um, I wish I could say I read it every day. I don't, I try to, I don't. Actually, I've not read it today. Um, that's if you're religious. If you're not, then maybe there's something else. Maybe you like to journal or do like, I like the five minute journals. I have mine again, I need to get back into it. Um, or even just writing down your thoughts in that moment, being really mindful. There's so many different things. I'm feeling a lot more into running and the weather, it's like fall, it's perfect running weather in my humble opinion. So for me, like I wasn't in the mood to go on a run yesterday, but I was like, I should. I've kind of been eating crappy the last few days and I just feel low energy. So I forced myself to go out and I just kind of started walking. And once I started running, I was literally as nerdy as it sounds smiling. Cause I was like, this is something that brings me joy. Even though I run, walk, I don't run an entire four miles. I'll run and then walk a little bit and run. But it brings me joy to be out there in the fresh air and doing something good for my body. And I know some of you guys are rolling your eyes cause you don't like to run. Find something that does that for you though. It doesn't have to be running. It doesn't have to be exercise at all, but okay. That, those are the things I do to stay positive. So Kalina asked, do you feel that YouTube is changing to a more conscientious spending habits space? I think so. Um, I mean, the reality is in any community like this, there are going to be people that are more conscientious and there are gonna be ones that aren't. The other reality is that drugstore haul videos and drugstore makeup try on videos, those do better than any other video on most people's channels, mine included. And so it's really hard from a business perspective, but then there's the ethics behind it where you're like, well, and so that's why I'm trying to 
kind of limit how many I do and not only do that and do other videos. And that's why I'm opening my channel up to lifestyle videos. I do see that obviously it's, it's a negative cycle. It's not necessarily a positive cycle to always be buying and to not be using up and stuff. So I do think, I mean, most of the channels I watch are ones that do shop my stash type videos or, you know, one video I'm planning to do soon. is like a chit chat, get ready with me, but just using, uh, no brand names or like a chit chat get ready with me with just using makeup I already own, you know? And I, I think that is a very healthy thing because none of us, YouTubers included, need to be buying makeup every single day. Now that's coming from someone that I did just go to the store and buy makeup for certain videos I'm planning out, but I'm trying to be more conscious of, instead of going and saying, oh, this new line of lipstick came out, let me buy five shades. I'm now saying, no, let me pick one singular shade that I will actually wear. So that way it's at least useful and I'm not perpetuating that same cycle. So it's a tricky line that I think a lot of us are towing that we're, we're just trying to bat, keep that balance. But I do think things are moving in the right direction. There are always gonna be those YouTubers that, are, that aren't changing with that and probably because they're seeing success and doing what they're doing and whether you like it or not, they're successful in what they're doing. So you are paying with your viewership. I think I heard Samantha March say that first and it's so true. You're paying with your viewership and so who you're watching, you are directly benefiting. So just keep that in mind. You're benefiting me right now, thank you so much. I've had quite a few questions asking about our next travel. So we are traveling to Europe. We might already be there by the time you're watching this. I don't remember the exact date I have for this video to go up. That's what I'm pre-filming, obviously. I think I've mentioned that in this video. We're gonna be in Barcelona for a while. We're going on Mediterranean cruise. I am pumped about that. And so we're going to four or five different places in the Mediterranean, and then we're gonna be in Paris as well. We've been to Paris and Barcelona, but we've not been to a f most of the other places we've been. So we're excited to go back. We're bringing our one-year-old Genevieve, Gigi, and that's gonna be interesting. I've been doing so much prep work of, you know, reading like 8,000 literally blogs about traveling to Europe with babies and kids and really making sure all of my ducks have been crossed. All, no, all, all of my ducks are in a row. Anyway, so I'm feeling pretty confident, knock on wood, uh, about that and, and just making sure we're not overpacking either, at least for ourselves, because we're already gonna be carrying stuff for her too. We also invited Tyler's parents to go with us and I think I feel more comfortable going across the Atlantic Ocean with more hands on deck with her since we've never done it before. I'm excited. I, I was previously really anxious and I still am, but I think now that I've done a lot of research and really, really planned, I feel a lot more excited about it than anxious. So it'll be fun, it'll be what it is. I think I'm more anxious about the long plane rides there and back. We ended up buying her a seat instead of doing a lap infant because it's you know like an eight or nine hour flight. So she'll have her own seat. We bought like the FAA approved safety harness for little kids. Um, knowing that she'll probably sit on our laps a decent amount of the time, but then also knowing she'll be safe. She can sleep if she needs and blah, blah, blah. So. All right, I think we'll end it there. I hope this was fun to watch. I can link my last coffee chat style video down below. Actually, better yet, I'm gonna make a playlist of all of my Q&A coffee chat style videos. If you wanna watch more of them, learn more about me, my past, whatever, my thoughts on things. I can link that up in the eye and down below. If you did enjoy, I hope you'll come say hi to me on social media. My screen name is GMBeauty89everywhere, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.